Peace, peace, family. Welcome to another episode of YP Higher Perspective, where we review internet media content via news clips, entertainment, or everyday recordings, and we give you a higher cognitive disposition in regards to the subject matter at hand. Today, family, we're going to give, be given a higher perspective in regards to Joshua Brown, who was the key witness in the Amber Guy, uh, excuse me, Amber Geiger murder trial for her killing Botham Jean. Okay, and we're going to be giving a the higher perspective in regards to Joshua Brown being being killed before he was able to testify against the uh, Dallas Police Department in regards to a lawsuit in favor of the Jean family. And so, normally I pull up videos, okay? But as you've seen on this channel, I also pull up articles, okay? Today we're going to be pulling up news uh, articles and we're also going to be featuring um, photographs from the judge's, uh, excuse me, from the judge's Twitter account, uh, I believe her name is Tammy Kemp. If that's not her name, correct me in the comments. The actual judge from the Amber Geiger case who gave her that bogus sentence, we're going to be pulling up images from her Twitter account because I'm going to be speaking on that in a minute in regards to why this may be uh, an interesting conflict in this case and to prove that it was some foul play behind the scenes in regards to Amber Geiger getting this uh, low sentence. Also, on how the district attorney may be able to appeal because not only can your attorney appeal, the district attorney can still appeal too because he still is an attorney. He can appeal this decision and continue to seek that 28 year minimum sentence that he wanted. If so, and I'm gonna give all the facts. And so with that being said, without further ado, family, like we always do, we finna bring it up and bam. And so as you can see right here, as I'm getting ready to read, this is from the New York Post. Okay, posted October 7, 2019, 10.04 a.m. Uh, this post was created, uh, or excuse me, this article was created by Jackie uh, Salo, I believe. And the title is, Slain Witness Joshua Brown Was Expected to Testify in Lawsuit Against Dallas Police. Okay, let's keep reading. Boom. The Dallas man who was murdered shortly after providing key testimony in the trial against killer cop Amber Geiger was set to take the stand in a civil lawsuit against the police department, according to a report. Joshua Brown, who was 28 years old, who was victim, Botham Jean's neighbor, was shot to death Friday night in an ambush outside his apartment in a Dallas neighborhood, according to police. No suspects have been arrested, okay? In the stain, I mean, excuse me, in the slang. Let's continue. To have a key witness suddenly killed is suspicious. Was this related to the trial? There is no clear indication. Uh, attorney Lee Merritt, who represents the Jean family, told CBS News, which I highly disagree with. Brown's death came days after Geiger was convicted of fatally shooting 26-year-old Jean, who she believed was an intruder when she mistakenly entered his apartment instead of her own. Merritt said Brown would have been one of their first key witnesses in the Jean family's wrongful death suit against the city of Dallas, which claims Dallas police failed to adequately uh, train Geiger, according to CBS News. Okay? Brown testified at Geiger's trial about the September uh, 2018 night that Jean was shot dead in his own apartment. And said that he heard uh, what sounded like two people meeting by surprise while he was in a hallway on the floor where he and Jean lived at. Okay. He also rejected Geiger's claims during the trial that she used commands such as put your hands up before shooting Jean. She didn't. All right. No one heard that. No neighbors. No passerbys. Not Joshua as he walked down the corridor. Not one. Merritt wrote on Facebook. Okay. Merritt has called for answers in the death of Brown, who he said lived uh, lived in constant fear that he would be the next victim of gun violence, okay? Brown deserves the same justice, okay? He sought to ensure the Jean family, Merritt wrote on Facebook. Once again, this post is from the New York Times. And so, uh, before I get to the judge's Twitter and, and talking about could Amber Geiger possibly receive the sentence that she's due, let me address the Joshua Brown uh, situation accordingly, okay? And so, first thing I want to say is this, okay? It, people kill me like they just lose common sense when it's time to accuse somebody that you're afraid of, okay? So if you're scared, go to church. I'm going to say this. If Takashi 69 goes to New York City right now and magically ends up murdered, nobody's going to say, oh, we wonder who did it. We wonder who did it. Okay? You don't watch enough mob movies, enough mafia movies, you don't watch enough motherfucking power, okay? 
You on about season six right now, I think. You know, okay, who the first suspect is when a witness is murdered specifically during a murder trial. Okay? It's not a it's not a it's not a it's not a uh a wild guess. So if Joshua Brown, which which has been confirmed, was not in the streets, not a gang member, had no known enemies, the only people at the time, okay, if you was a district attorney, okay, or you was a detective. When it comes to proving a crime, what is the first thing you need? Motive. Everybody knows that. It's not just the what. It's the why. What's the motive? So if this man is not in the streets, no, no street niggas, no gangbangers have no motive to murder him. Okay? He didn't get robbed. None of that. And the way he was shot, if I'm not mistaken, okay, I may be incorrect. I believe he was shot three times, once in the mouth, two in the chest. Okay? So the way that he was executed shows that a message was being sent, okay? He got on a stand, and according to the shooter, ran his mouth. So he got shot in his mouth. He was ambushed. They waited on this man, okay? Now, one thing I do know, okay, is that this is not a normal homicide, okay? Y'all know I would be the first to tell you, oh, niggas did that. Remember when them, remember when them two kids got shot in the car? And they was talking about white people did it. And I was the only nigga saying, nah, Nick, some niggas did that. Ain't no white people do that. And y'all was all mad at me. And what happened? Niggas did it. I would, y'all know I'm the first to keep it real. This ain't, a, niggas didn't do this. Oh, we didn't do this. And, and, and if we did do it, it was, it was them, them people, nigga. It ain't, it ain't, it ain't lower class hood niggas. This is them, this is them, what we finna get into when I show this picture type niggas. Okay. So continuing on. Okay. This young man was murdered for doing what the law encourages him to do. Now, why is this important? When you get somebody who follows the law, who cooperates with law enforcement, and, and is treated criminally to the point where they're assassinated, okay? Call it like it is. The boy was assassinated, okay? By, allegedly, the suspects here, in my mind, are the people who have been accused or connected to the accused or people who have the most to lose. So when we say motive... Why would somebody kill somebody? First, we have to figure out who has the most to lose and at the same time, who has the most to gain from the death of this specific target, okay? Nobody at the time of this man's murder via this month, this year, seems to benefit more than the people that's being sued. Then the woman that went to, I'm not benefiting from, I don't know the nigga. What I want him killed for? Why would I want, why you want him killed? You know him? He owe you 29? Okay. And so nobody benefits more from a key witness, the main witness dying in regards to their case than the person that's on the stand. Now, this is not just about Amber Geiger. As you see here, he was getting ready to testify against the Dallas Police Department as well. So we no, we no longer just can specifically hone in on Amber Geiger. Could she have a call to hit out on him or something? Maybe. I'm not ruling that out. But she's not the only person that needs to be looked at. The entire Dallas Police Department now needs to be looked at. Am I saying that they did it? No, I'm not. Am I saying that they didn't do it? No, I'm not. All I'm saying is I find it funny how you get to investigate yourself for some shit you suspicious of. That's all I'm saying. <coughs> so, here's my suggestion, okay? Here, here's my higher perspective on the situation before I, I go to the second half of this, of this, of this, of this uh, session. We need to create an independent firm for investigating law enforcement, okay? When law enforcement is at the subject of public, I mean, is the subject of public scrutiny and distrust. Let me say this again. We, the people, need to create a situation that works for us via our tax dollars. We blow tax dollars on everything else. We could, this won't hurt. We need to get together. All taxpayer citizens, I don't care what ethnicity, if you are righteous, a law-abiding citizen, we need to put these tax dollars together, whether y'all want to vote or whatever y'all want to do. Put these tax dollars together, and we need to create firms whose job is to investigate situations such as these when we do not trust law enforcement to investigate themselves, okay? You cannot sit here, okay, and tell the Dallas Police Department, go investigate your motherfucking self because we believe that 
you shot a motherfucker in his house on accident. Huh? What you talking about? The police chief ain't even immediately fired Amber, Ge Amber Geiger. And that's the one that's cool with it. That's what I'm about to show you. So, we need a firm. Okay? It's, it's enough college kids coming out of goddamn law school. It's enough. It, it don't even gotta be black. I'm not even saying it gotta be. I don't care if it's a Spanish firm. I don't care. Long as you righteous, we can trust you. Okay? We need a firm of people. Okay? Who know how to do this work. Okay? It's enough people that ain't graduated from college. It's enough people that ain't graduated from, from universities and institutions who don't have employment, who would love employment, who our tax dollars could gladly employ to not be biased, to not be a weaponized medium for us against the police or people who don't like police. I'm talking about a fear institution who says, you know what? We believe it's some foul play at hand. Okay? And we need to... Come and investigate your ass. Now, why do I say this? I know a lot of people say, well, don't the FBI come and in investigate lower law enforcement level agencies? Sometimes, I guess when they feel like it, because isn't this something that the FBI would want to get involved in? God damn, you know what I'm saying? Jesus fucking Christ. And I know the FBI got a lot of important shit going on, okay? I'm not knocking that. But what I'm saying is, think, you, 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 I know you heard this. I know the director of the FBI didn't heard. I know the CIA didn't heard about this. A cop killed a man inside of his own home eating ice cream, gets sentenced 10 years, and then the key witness to her dies before they sue that same police department? At what point in time would a higher law enforcement agency not step in? So are we saying that we want to usurp the FBI's power to investigate lower levels of law enforcement? No. But what we're saying is we can't wait on them all the time. Okay, because apparently they too goddamn busy. So we need a safety. We need a fallback. We need something that says, you know what? Hey, FBI, maybe you didn't hear about this shit that's going on. Come over here and look at this. And here's what we found from our own PIs, our own private PIs, our own, you know, private investigators and et cetera, et cetera. So what you gonna call it? That's not a far fetched idea. Nobody's saying attack any police. This is, this is, we need a safety protocol. Because what happens one day, or even in this case, if it come true, what happens if it turns out that we find out a motherfucking member of the Dallas Police Department, or, 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 or a member of the sorority, okay, that the judge and the police chief belongs to, has been put in a situation where they were sent to do the job of getting rid of Joshua Brown so that way the Dallas Police Department would not face a lawsuit from the family of Botham Jean. Okay? And so now, before I get to the second part, I'm, I'm finishing now. When it comes to the lawsuit, all I know is I don't care who's, who, who getting sued. The brother better not had it been expected to get a motherfucking thing. He forgave. He forgave. He didn't want her to go to jail. So surely he doesn't wish to be compensated. So I just want to know who the fuck is planning on benefiting from this man's death. Not the father. Not the nigga that want to be friends. Not you. Not you. So I don't understand how Botham Jean's family thought that they was about to sue the Dallas Police Department for something that they forgave them for. What kind of shit is that? Why do you, why are you so hurt when it comes to the potential of receiving monetary gains, but you're not hurt when it comes to the potential of sentencing someone who allegedly hurt you that much? If she didn't hurt you that much to where you were able to hug her and forgive her for killing your brother, then she didn't hurt you that much to where you think you about to receive a motherfucking cash settlement, nigga. And so, when you hugged her and you forgave her for the murder of your brother, you should also now forgive her and forgive the Dallas Police Department for the shit that you're saying that they should pay you for. Huh? So, killing your brother is not good enough for her to go to jail, but it's good enough for you to get paid? Huh? You and your, and your silly ass father? And so, do y'all see the type of shit people be on? Huh? Fuck my brother. I don't really care that he got killed, but I got a chance to, uh, you know, cash in on his death. So now, oh yeah, now I'm hurt. Oh, fuck my son. 
I want to be friends with his killer. Oh, wait a minute. We can sue and get some money? Oh, no, I'm hurt now. Now I'm hurt now. Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. You don't care? I don't care. I don't believe the Dallas Police Department should be sued. I don't care what nobody say. I don't care how nobody feel. The fam it's up. It ain't our business. It's the family. It's, I mean, excuse me. It ain't our decision. It's the family decision. The family said that they forgave. So since you forgave, why are you why why are you trying to pursue a lawsuit? Huh? So you a liar now. So you didn't really forgive. So you you out here being a fake ass Christian or something. I don't understand that. I don't understand that. Huh? I don't understand that. When when they forgive your motherfucking student loans, they forgive them. I don't I don't hear nobody saying, oh, we forgive this debt, but oh you still got a pet. No, nah, if you forgive the debt, you forgive the debt. Okay? You don't have you don't forgive the debt when it's convenient to you and then don't want to forgive the debt when it's not convenient to you, okay? Now, let me pull up another clip, as I always do, okay? Pull up another clip, as I always do. This is from uh, Judge Tammy Kemp's campaign on Twitter, okay? Ready? Here we go, and bam. This was posted by the judge who presided over the Amber Geiger case, who was Judge Kemp. She posted this on October 8th, 2017. And so, if you don't know, both of them are a part of the sorority Delta Sigma Theta, okay? Now, I did an entire lecture exposing Delta Sigma Thetas, I mean, excuse me, black sororities and fraternities. Uh, W.E.D. Boyce himself quoted that black fraternities and sororities were started by European Freemasons to keep black professionals away from Marcus Garvey. Okay, that's a fact. This is this is factual. So if you're a part of a sorority or fraternity, you may or may not know the history of your organization is not a direct attack on you. But the di but the organizations were started by European Freemasons, to be exact, and were all named after Freemasons. All of these HBCU colleges are actually named after white Freemasons. Howard Howard was not a black person. Howard was a European Freemason. So HBCUs. All the fraternities, all of the sororities were created by white Freemasons to keep black professionals away from Marcus Garvey. Now, why is this important? These are also, also breeding grounds to be recruited by the upper class secret society, which is Freemasons. So if you need a pyramid, it goes the elites, Freemasons, I mean, excuse me, Freemasonry, and then sororities and fraternities. So people that are a part of sororities and fraternities normally go on to be drafted to become Freemasons, and then once you become a Freemason, as long as you're doing what they tell you to do, and depending upon your devotion, you make and become an elite. So nobody, this is facts. This is, this is research, years and years of research that I've done on this. Plenty, plenty of people have done on this. This is, Nobody's making this up. So you can think of sororities and fraternities like NCAA and Freemasonry like the NFL. And then you can think of the elites like the Hall of Fame. So why is this important? Sororities... I mean, excuse me, soror yeah, sororities, which are the female sectors of these of these Greek, you know, sect uh, sections, which we also call the Black Boule, etc. They move just like any other secret society moves. But it's not what do you what? It's not a surprise. And so, here's my issue. Okay, here's my issue, and I'm gonna pull up this other picture right here. Bam, as I as I uh state my issue, and you can see this says Dallas Police Association proudly endorses Tammy Kemp. Huh? Now, I'm going to tell y'all this is important. This is this 100. I've been to court plenty of times. Plenty of times. Okay? I didn't see judges come off the bench. I didn't see lawyers get replaced. District attorneys get replaced for one of the, one of the famous lines in a courtroom. In arrest of conflict. Okay? The judge and the lawyer can't be. We know that they play golf and do, each, and, and do what they do. But we can't know that. You can't know that. We all can't know that. My judge can't be friends with somebody. The district court, we, we cannot be doing the friend thing, okay? My, my judge can't be friends with my boss. That's an interesting conflict. My attorney, okay, can't be dating the district attorney's wife. That's an interesting conflict. So it's, it's presumed in the court of law, okay, that the court proceedings and my Fifth Amendment, my right to due process, okay, or in this this instance, Botham Jean's Fifth Amendment, his right to do pro I mean, excuse me, Amber Geiger, uh, not Botham Jean, and, and I mean, not Botham Jean, Amber Geiger's Fifth Amendment, her right to due process involving the murder of Botham Jean, okay, it was presumed that she was being judged and tried fairly, okay, everybody's supposed to have a fair shot, not just her, the district attorney is too, 
Now, I'm going to take the district attorney side in this one, okay? And if y'all don't know, the district attorney saw a minimum of 28 years. Now, I'm going to tell you why that's important, okay? The district attorney is not just a prosecutor. He's an attorney. And all district attorneys take a, 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 a oath, to, I mean, excuse me, an ethical oath of conduct that they will not only prosecute, okay, but that they will also seek exculpatory evidence, which is evidence that could vindicate you of your charges. So this is like when you watch Law and Order and they be like, oh, we don't got enough evidence and whoopty whoop. Those are how DAs are really supposed to conduct themselves, even though we never see that shit. But in this case, okay, hats off to the district attorney, okay? He didn't do no racist shit. He didn't cut no corners. He charged her. He didn't drop the charges. He didn't bullshit. And he sought the minimum of 28 years. Now, here's where the interest of conflict comes in. Okay? Here's what it, here's, here's, if y'all need, if y'all needed some help in Dallas telling internal affairs where to investigate, I'm finna give you the help. Okay? Amber Geiger's judge. Okay? Is sorority members with her boss. Okay, now why to support it? Does the courts, does the Dallas state courts have jurisdiction and control over that sorority? No, they do not. Which means you cannot control, huh? Once again, you cannot control the goings on of this sorority. It's just like blood, it's just like the Takashi case. If somebody do something in the Takashi case that's a blood member, the courts can't have control over that. So one of the court, one of the judges can't be a blood. You can't be a blood and be a judge and then be prosecuting. Let me give you an example. What we see in here would be the equivalent of if Takashi got one year in jail right now, but we found out, okay, that his attorney is a, is a fraternity member. Excuse me. Let's, let's act like his attorney is a, is a female. His attorney is a sorority member. And, and she's a sorority member with the same sorority that the judge is. But in this case, they bloods. Huh? You would say, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. That's an interesting conflict. Okay? That's an interesting conflict. Because it, there's a potential that some negotiating or some foul play could have went on behind the scenes. We're not saying that it did or it didn't happen. Okay? I'm saying there's a potential. There's reasonable doubt. And that right there creates, for me... And I believe the majority of the public enough reasonable suspicion to believe that she should have had another motherfucking judge. That's something that should have been looked at before the before this judge was even given this case file. OK, somebody should have said, hey, you can't be on this case because you are friends with her boss on a on a deeper level than the public eye. Yo, everybody in the public eye is not a sorority member. We can't just come in y'all shit and see what y'all talking about, huh? We can't tap y'all phones and listen to y'all. So outside of her being a police chief and outside of her being a judge, they have a deeper interest within each other. This is why it's called conflict of interest. So what I would do if I was the prosecutor, because people think only attorneys can make appeals. And I keep telling you the district attorney is an attorney. He's the head attorney of your district. You just only see him as a prosecutor. What I would do if I was the district attorney, if they was really in an interested justice and they really feel that her sentence is, uh, or excuse me, was biased in a form of injustice as we all do. If I was the district attorney of Dallas, I would appeal that myself. I would appeal the sentence, the sentence. Okay. Not the conviction. I would appeal the sentence on the conviction. Okay? And I would say that I believe Mrs. Geiger was sentenced below my requested 28 years minimum sentence. Okay? Because, okay, once again, because her employer is a sorority member with the judge. Which could have caused a bias favor. I mean, excuse me, a biasness to work in the favor of Mrs. Geiger during sentencing. Simple as that. Simple as, I ain't no attorney. Whatever, clean that shit up. But y'all know what I'm getting at. And that's actually a valid argument. Look into it. Can we check some phone records? Can we check, can we get a warrant? Huh? Can we get a warrant for some phones and, and check? Can we see if there has been a line of communication between the judge and her boss? Can we see if during any point in time in this case, they have been in the same place at the same time? And if so, how long? 
And if so, what was the topic of conversation? What was the topic? What was the goddamn, you know, what was the atmosphere like? Why were they together? Were they meeting at private, co private coffee shops? Or were they accidentally bumping into each other in the car? Can we get an investigation going on? Because I'm not happy with that 10-year motherfucking sentence. Period. And uh, it doesn't have, y'all don't gotta go for that down there in Dallas. Okay? And I'm gonna I'm show one more clip before I go of uh, Amber Geiger's judge showing biasness. Okay? Because I don't want nobody to say, oh, you capping right now. You capping. I'm going to show her actually upset that Joshua Brown showed up to testify to where she even said, I mean, excuse me, made a gesture out of her mouth as well as her body language to being upset that he came. Tell me, I'm surprised he came. Looking upset. She's mad that he came to testify against the officer. So that's biasness. This is all biasness that a judge is showing on the goddamn bench. You can't do that, man. And then after you after you showed uh, a, a, a disfavor that the witness came and testified against her, you showed her favor by hugging her after the sentence. Okay? Which is improper conduct in a court of law. You didn't even hug the witness and he cried on the stand and asked for, and asked for time to be excused. And so with that being said, uh, I'm going to pull this clip up, okay, of... The judge saying that she surprised Joshua Brown came after he asked to be excused from the bench. Here we go. Bam. See her face? Why you not? Now, let me let me say this. Why are you as a judge surprised that a witness showed up to follow the law? Are you surprised that the jurors came to? Are you surprised that the fucking stenographer came to? Why? What's surprising? What's surprising? What's surprising? That a citizen who, who doesn't live illegally felt comfortable to come into a court of law where he should have been protected. What's surprising about that? So all of this shit is suspect to me. All of this is interesting conflict to me. But like I said, to each his own and as much Corrupt, and I'm not blaming the whole Dallas Police Department. I'm not blaming the city of Dallas. I'm not doing none of that. But in this specific case, what I will say is as much of a rodeo show that we're seeing right now, okay, between three people, Amber Geiger, this judge, and that police chief, okay, as much as a rodeo show we're saying we're seeing, I honestly will say I don't believe the Dallas Police Department deserves to be sued. I don't believe they should have been sued. Okay? Talking about they trained her, uh, I mean, excuse me, they was going to sue her for incorrect training. Because to my understanding, okay, to my understanding, Amber Geiger was off duty. Okay? Now, whether she was on duty, off duty when she shot, when she shot him, y'all debate that. To my understanding, she was off duty. So, what you do off duty, okay, I don't think that the Dallas Police Department should be sued for that. I believe her justice should have came in the form of criminal uh, at criminal proceedings, not civil proceedings, okay? So I feel like the family, the same family who talking about they forgive somebody, I don't feel that this family should be compensated, especially if they found it in their heart to forgive. Forgive your ass back at home and live the rest of your life without trying to put your foot on the Dallas Police Department neck to pinch a penny for something that one of their racist ass police officers did off duty. So as much as I disagree with this case, as much as I disagree with what went on, I actually am on the side in this particular matter. As far as the lawsuit and the sentencing goes, I'm on the side of the Dallas Police Department and the prosecution. I don't believe that her sentence was fair. I believe the prosecution got cheated out of his case, okay, in regards to the time he sought. And I don't believe that a lawsuit is justified because the family apparently is not mourning that much. It don't hurt them that much to the point where they don't even want her to go to jail. So, and then on top of that, she wasn't on duty. So I don't understand how you trying to sue somebody for uh, saying that the police department didn't train her properly, okay, when she wasn't on duty. It don't matter what the fuck she do off duty. You trying to put that on? So if she was drunk driving and hit somebody on the side of the road off duty, could they sue the Dallas Police Department because she was drunk on Saturday night? No, you, no, that's not, even though there's been some corrupt things police have done, I'm not corrupt, so I'm not going to issue, you know, corruption 
just to satisfy my own hurts. No, right is right, wrong is wrong. And so, I know you probably didn't want to hear that. I don't give a fuck. But with that being said, family, uh, the higher perspective of this today is to look at the totality of the situation, okay? We're not two years old and five years old anymore, okay? There's a murder. There's a murder victim. The first thing we need to prove is motive. Who, at this point in time right now, would have a motive to kill Botham Jean? The answer is pretty much self-explanatory. The, the style that he was murdered, okay? The way that he was murdered, okay? What kind of bullet was he shot with? Can, can we get something? Can we get a ballistics on that? Can we know what type of firearm he was shot with so we, so we could know if that's something niggas is carrying? If they say he got shot with a Deuce, Deuce Dillinger, it might have been a nigga, okay? If he got shot with something else, niggas ain't running around with that. So can we please, can we please get just as much as informed as everybody else? And I also want to say this, okay? Okay, like I said, I may have, I may have read incorrectly. I'm always over for, 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 uh, inter I mean, excuse me, correct interpretation. So let me know in the comments. But if I'm not mistaken, uh, his ID was taken. Okay? His ID was taken when he was murdered, when he was assassinated. Let me say that correct, when he was assassinated. Now, you might say, Pharaoh, why is that important that his ID got took? It takes longer to ID the body. So whoever murdered him knew to take that ID so that way they would have just enough time to get out of the, to get out of the region. Okay? Let me give an example. If they would have ID Joshua Brown immediately, then whoever does it, whoever is in charge of investigating the detectives and all that, they would say, okay, we need a motive. Who did it? Wooty wooty woo. Who could have did it? Lock this down. Go here. Go here. Go here. But that extra little time period that it took for them to ID the body could have gave the killer just enough window to get out of Dodge. Everybody watch First 48. They say if you don't solve the crime in the first 48 hours, most likely you're about to get a cold lead. The taking of that ID is what made that 48 hour window damn near close if it has not closed already. So that's not something niggas do. Niggas don't shoot niggas, don't rob them, don't take nothing but take an ID. Most black people commit crimes out of uh, poverty, ba I mean, excuse me, impoverished, I mean, excuse me, impoverished influence. Okay? Whether it's a drug related crime, whatever it's financial uh, means or gains involved, they broke. Or they damn near trying not to go completely broke. And they're committing crime in regards to survival means. Not, we gonna kill a nigga for free, take his ID. And so we not, we not gonna hold this one at all. I'm gonna come out and say it early before it even... I'm not even gonna... If they say a nigga did this, I don't believe it. I don't believe it. But, keep watching. Keep watching. And keep forgiving. <laughs> keep forgiving. But with that being said, family. This video right here was not to, you know, inflammate... Any tension between anybody and the police? Like I said, I'm, I'm actually, I don't think the Dallas police should be sued right here. I think Amber Geiger did something by herself. Uh, she should be charged by herself. I don't think this was no, this wasn't no Rodney King incident. Okay, so I don't think that the entire Dallas police department should be penalized for something that one person did off due. I don't feel that way. In my spirit, I don't. But, okay, uh, I also feel that the prosecution, okay, should, if he actually is serious about the interest of justice, should appeal her sentencing guideline himself and seek the conviction that he originally sought. But, I'm going to tell y'all why a lot of this stuff don't get done. Because a lot of these people are in these fraternities. Okay? It's not just Freemasonry. It's these sororities and these fraternities. And they playing by their own rules. I know people right now, personally, who is a part, who, men who are part of fraternities. And they'll let you know you can't even get a job in certain places of business if you're not a member of that fraternity. So, just know that, okay? You got your people that graduate from college. Then you got your people that graduate from college and they in these certain fraternities. And they get put into certain occupations quicker than the rest of us because they got these connections, okay? And so, I just want to let y'all know, this is what we need to start investigating. It's not about the hand that you don't see. It's about what you don't see. We're not just looking at polices, judges, DAs, politicians, mayors, etc. We want to know who going to the lodge. We want to know who's a part of what fraternity, who's a part of what sorority, because now we can know who actually has an oath and who considers who their brother and who considers who not their brother. Okay? I know for a fact two fraternity uh, brothers are gonna be loyal to each other to each other before they before they loyal to me. That's how they giving it up. I like I did a whole lecture on this. I'm not about to run down this lane again. But with that being said, family, 
Uh, this has been another YB Higher Perspective, and I hope that this video has not enraged you. I hope that this video has not influenced you to go out there and do anything crazy. I hope that this video has enlightened you and done nothing other than to make you open your mind to the possibility of why this situation could have taken place. And with that being said, family, I love y'all. Peace.